high blood pressure is one of the leading risk factors worldwide for heart disease, which is the biggest preventable killer of humans on this planet. It's also a risk factor for many other diseases as well. And what if you could drive down this risk factor, change your blood pressure without making any effort? This is probably the one legitimate health hack that I've ever seen. This is evidence-based, it works right away, and you barely notice any difference. And that is changing your salt. So there's a massive study called the Global Burden of Disease Study. It's looking at the leading causes of death of all causes from all over the planet. And they found that excess sodium, which is basically salt, was among the top three causes of preventable death worldwide. The other two being low intake of fruit and veggies and whole grains. So sodium, like everything, it's a double-edged sword. We do need it. It's completely necessary for our survival. But if we have too much of it, our kidneys have to hold onto more water to maintain balance in our blood. And this leads to our blood pressure increasing. There's more stress and pressure on our cardiovascular system and our heart has to work harder to pump our blood. And so over time, this increases our risk of things like heart attacks and stroke. And these are the leading causes of death in our society. So it's really something that we should be paying attention to. High sodium intake may also raise the risk of kidney disease, osteoporosis, and stomach cancer. And so you've probably heard it, everyone's saying you need to eat less salt, eat less salt. But if it was that easy, we'd all do it, right? The problem is that salt is delicious. It tastes amazing when you add it to food. It helps to bring out the flavors in a dish and create a more balanced flavor profile. All the most commonly consumed processed foods are very high in salt. And the same thing if you go out to a restaurant, chefs use a lot of salt because it makes the food taste good. If they didn't make good tasting food, they wouldn't have many repeat customers. And the problem with this is the more salt we have, the more desensitized to it we are. So the more we end up eating. But also, when we reduce salt over time, we crave it less and actually prefer the taste of less salty foods. So this is good to know if you are wanting to make change, but most of us who don't want to eat less salt, ideally we'd find something that tastes salty but doesn't raise our blood pressure. And we have found something, it's called potassium chloride. So salt is normally sodium chloride, and potassium chloride tastes salty, and it doesn't just not raise our blood pressure, but it actually helps to lower our blood pressure because of the opposite effect potassium has compared to sodium. So one study looked into this question where they gave people some potassium salt. And in this study, they only swapped 25% of the participant's salt with this potassium chloride substitute. And they found that it significantly reduced the risk of heart attack and stroke. But it's important to note this study was in older people who already had an elevated risk of heart attacks and stroke. So we might not see the same risk reduction in younger, healthier people, for example. But because of what we know about sodium and the way it increases blood pressure, if high blood pressure is a problem for you, and that's something you can talk about with your doctor or healthcare provider, then in my opinion, it is worth making this switch. And looking at other research, people that eat the most salt had the highest risk of dying and the people that ate more potassium had lower risk of death. And so there's lots of different salt options out there. I'll put the links to some in the description, but basically you can get ones that are different ratios of normal salt sodium chloride to the substitute potassium chloride. And you can basically mix this how you want. For example, maybe if you really have high blood pressure, you wanna bring it down, you might wanna go for 100% potassium chloride, or you can change that up if you, if you notice a taste difference, or if you're just wanting to generally reduce your salt intake to meet the recommended guidelines, you can get blends with different amounts. I currently have one that's 70% sodium chloride, 30% potassium chloride. So it still tastes very salty, but you get a little bit less sodium. And what about not getting enough salt? Well, for general people, it's not really a problem. Maybe some athletes that are doing a lot of exercise and sweating a lot, but they're generally replacing that through electrolytes, these sports drinks that provide sodium, potassium, the electrolyte minerals back into the blood and other certain health conditions. But again, that's something that you should have a talk about with your healthcare provider. And a majority of our sodium intake actually comes from eating processed foods and eating out. So cooking your own food at home is the best thing that you can do in order to moderate your sodium intake, control your blood pressure, and just make sure you're in control of the food that you're putting into your body. So one of the best things that you can do to support your health. And so what about other dietary changes? There's so much confusing information online. If you wanna learn about what the world's healthiest diet is, 
then check out this video where I go over all of the evidence of eating in a way to support optimal health.